Chapter Five of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording by Becky Cook. Chapter Five of Women of History by Anonymous. Aspasia of Cyrus, B.C. 421, Baal. This celebrated woman was a Phoesia and daughter of one Hermotomus. According to the portrait left us by Alien, she was very accomplished, both in body and mind. Her name, before she went to Cyrus, was Milto, for that which the king substituted that of the famous mistress of Pericles. Her rearing under her father, who lost her mother when the child was born, was proportioned to his limited means, and when very young she was the cause of a peculiar grief to him, insomuch as, while she was extremely beautiful, she was rendered almost hideous by a tumour which grew upon her chin. The doctor, to whom her father had sent her to get the tumour removed, returned the patient in the same condition in which she went, for the reason that he had got no fee, and Milto was consequently plunged in grief, every now and then examining her face in the mirror. It was said that she discovered in a dream the means of her cure, and when this was accomplished, her features were restored to their natural proportions, so that she became the fairest maiden of her time. She has been represented as having blonde hair with a natural curl, large eyes, a nose slightly aquiline, small ears, a delicate skin, partaking of the rose and the lily, red lips, pearly teeth, her legs and arms formed in perfection, and a voice so mellifluous as to rival that of the sirens. These qualities, which were the gifts of nature, were unadorned by artifice, for neither the inclination nor the ability of her father permitted of extraneous decoration. It happened that some of those officers who commanded under Cyrus, son of the king of Persia, had observed Milto, and, considering her charms, sent her against her own consent and that of her father to their master, along with some other beautiful girls of Greek descent. When they presented her to Cyrus, he rose from the table and proceeded to amuse her by endeavouring to get her a drink according to the custom of the country. The three Greek girls who were with her were not of the humour of Milto, for, retaining in remembrance the instructions of their nurses, they played the role allotted to them, allowing themselves to be decked out for the occasion, and manifesting pleasure when Cyrus approached them, caressed them, or kissed them. They even vied with each other in the success of their powers of attraction, but Milto exhibited so much repugnance to the usage to which she had been so strangely destined, that it was not without force that she was made to submit to the necessary decoration of her person nor when these others were enjoying themselves with the mirth and laughter of their emulation to please the prince did milto cease to weep not daring even to lift her eyes in the shame of the situation in which she found herself placed when cyrus would request any of the others to sit near him the request did not require to be repeated but as for aspasia she paid no attention to it while they allowed him to fondle them she resisted even the touch of his finger and used menaces in her defence in the way of offended women. At length Cyrus put his hand upon her, when, rising indignantly from the table, she endeavoured to escape. But Cyrus did justice to her virtue, declaring that of all the girls who had been sent to him, she alone had displayed the beauty of innocence and modesty, and he thenceforth loved her more than he had done any other woman. Nor was it only by the qualities of her person that Aspasia exercised an influence over Cyrus. She ruled him also by her counsels. He consulted her on all occasions, even on the most difficult subjects, and never had cause to repent the advice which she offered him. It was indeed difficult to say whether she excelled more in the gifts of her person or those of her mind, and as influence such as hers goes a great way, she might have swayed the sovereignty if she had greater mind to such kind of ambition. As for all that concerns rank and dignity, she was treated by Cyrus as his legitimate queen, and so far as could be known, he limited his affections to Aspasia and her alone. So we might cease to wonder if this grand elevation of a poor Greek girl should make a noise at the court of the great king. Nor was this reputation of small service to her, for after Cyrus was slain, Aspasia was diligently sought after by Artaxerxes. She was found sorrowful and desolate, and it was not without resistance that she allowed herself to be dressed in the habit which he had sent her. At the first interview, Artaxerxes fell deeply in love with her, but it was long before she could be prevailed upon to return his affection. End of section 5